going to discuss the new caregiver program that's formerly known as the Live-In Caregiver Program in Canada. Um, the caregiver program is a, the government's way of showing appreciation towards some um, caregivers and uh, allowing them to um, unite with their families and remove some of the pressure that they've had in the old way of the living caregiver program. Um, the live-in portion out of the program has been dropped. That is actually no longer required to be able um, to apply under um, the caregiver program and you don't have to live with the family uh, that is that you're going to be um, caring after their children um, or, or helping them with their elderly um, that have um, health um, uh, limitations and that's why they need somebody to to care for them so the caregiver program is a transition from the old system to the new system in addition to this transition there's actually two new streams that were now added under the caregiver program which is caring for children and caring for elderly uh, with um, health um, um, limitations and that's why you need to get a caregiver for that. So now you actually have options when it comes to the stream that you want to get into based on your experience and based on your preference when it comes to um, do I want to be a nanny and care after children or do I want to be a nurse or a registered nurse um, and then care after um, people that have um, health issues or limitations um, and, and they require assistance at all times. So the, the two streams are very similar in terms of requirements. The main difference between the caring for children versus caring for elderly is the registration aspect of things. So if you're going to be a nurse under the, um, the Caring for Elderly program, you actually have to be a, regist uh, a registered nurse, and then you need to show that you're certified to work in Canada in that particular job or in that particular position. On the flip side, uh, in the ch Caring for Children, if you're going to be a nanny, for an example, or a caregiver, you actually don't need to be certified because you're not going to be a registered nurse. So that's the main focal difference between both. Now, in terms of requirements, let's just cover up the requirements for the first stream, which is the caring for children. Number one, the, child, uh, the, the child's age needs to be uh, less than 18 years old. So um, that's a clarification of what a minor is. So, um, and then you need to uh, be able to work for that uh, particular employer um, for two years, which is 24 months, um, under a legal or legally obtained work permit. Um, and then that work permit will allow you to then apply for your permanent residency under the caregiver program. So it's a two-step approach. First, you come under a work permit for two years. Well, the, the work permit can be issued for a maximum of four years, but you will be working for two years. And then for these two years, you will gain your experience. You would work for the uh, for the, as a caregiver uh, looking after a child that's under the age of 18. And then you will be able to be a, um, eligible for the caregiver um, stream for permanent residency and applying um, for yourself and your family members if you have any accompanying or non-accompanying family members coming with you. So the requirements are for the, the like we said, for the caregiver uh, program for children is to work for 20, 24 months or two years for that employer. Um, and then number two is your language command or the language level for English or French it needs to be at uh, Canadian uh, level, uh, which is CLB level five. And whatever that translates to your IELTS score, whatever um, French test that you're going to take. And then the third thing, is um, your education. You need to have a minimum of one uh, year um, of post-secondary education, whether it is a diploma or whatever it is that equalizes to your education system in Canada, unless you gain that um, education in Canada. So it needs to be just for one year. So two years of work experience under a work permit as a caregiver, 
for a particular um, employer, caring for children. Number two, CLB level five um, for your uh, English or French language proficiency. And the last thing is your education level needs to be at one year of post-secondary um, degree that's been received inside or outside of Canada um, that um, you can apply with it for the CEC, sorry, the, the, the caregiver program for children. Now this is caring for children. Similarly, for the um, caring for people that, um, that require medical assistance, again, you need to work for two years, 24 months, uh, under a work permit that's valid. You need to have ling uh, language proficiency of CLB5 if you're going to be uh, working as a non-registered nurse. If you're going to be a registered nurse, then it just jumps up to CLB7. Um, and then the last thing is the post-secondary um, post education of one year that you need to receive. And then, of course, the licensing aspect of the registered nurse to be able to work on that. So both cases, you need to have um, one year of education that's post-secondary level. Both cases, you need to have 24 months or two years of work experience here, caring for children here, working for people with um, health conditions. Uh, in both cases, you need to have language proficiency. For the caring for children is CLB5, and similarly for non-registered nurses is CLB5 for the, um, the health stream, and then CLB7 if you're going to be a registered nurse. Now, you add on top of this list, or at the bottom of this list, you add the registrations or the licensing aspect of it if you're going to be a registered nurse to add to the health stream and that's not going to be required for the caring for children or the nanny stream. The, the way that you calculate your work experience is going to be on a full-time level. So you need to have a minimum of 30 hours per week. That calculates um, into you know, times 4, times 12, times 2. So you need to have a total amount of hours you need to gain in two years to be able to consider two full time years of work experience under this stream. You take that in addition to the other requirements and you'll be able to apply for your PR application for whether, whether um, um, it is a ch uh, caring for children or caring for, um, for elderly or um, health condition um, related uh, employers. Now, um, What's a work permit and what's a permanent residency? The work permit is an authorization for the government to be able to temporary work in Canada. So it's a pre-step um, for your permanent residency. You first come to Canada, you work under work permit for one, two, three, up to four years. The maximum is four. And then within this period of time, once you gain two, full -time, two years of full-time work experience, then you can go ahead and apply for your permanent residency. Now, once you become a permanent resident, you go under the uh, residency obligations and the permanent residency obligations of becoming a permanent resident of Canada. But before you do that, you need to comply to the work permit regulations um, as a temporary foreign worker in Canada working for a particular employer. For you to be able to get a work permit under the caregiver program, your employer needs to apply for something called a LIMIA or a labor, uh, the labor market uh, impact assessment. Um, that is a step that the employer will take. They work with the ESDC uh, or the um, Employment and Social Development um, Canada um, agency for them to get the positive LIMIA. They give the employee the positive LIMIA, along with the contract and all the other requirements that the employer is supposed to give the um, employee. The employee then, or the caregiver that's sitting abroad, takes these documents and applies for the work permit. Um, they will take the work permit along with their visa. If they require a visa or not, depends on their passport. Then they come to Canada, do their two years of work experience required with the employer. 
under one of the two streams that we discussed. And then after they gain that work experience, they go ahead and apply for their permanent residency under the caregiver stream to be able to qualify for a longer term plan, which is to become a permanent residency in Canada. Throughout this whole entire process, if the caregiver has family, common law partner or child or whatever it is, they actually can bring them along with them. This was not an option in the past. Now it is. So part of the, uh, the government's approach to re, um, uh, unify families in Canada, you can actually bring your um, family with you once you get your work permit. And later on, once you become a permanent resident, you actually apply for them um, part of your application to become permanent residents as well. Now, if they don't accompany you on, on your work permit, later on, while they're abroad, um, they can actually apply for, after you, after you apply for your permanent residency, you become a permanent resident of Canada, they can actually apply uh, um, to become permanent residents as well um, because you got approved. So it becomes an option for you based on your personal objectives is you want to bring your family with you since day one or do you want to go um, and, and do your work for two years, get your permanent residency and then apply for their permanent residency. That becomes an option um, that you can discuss with your family. So to summarize the caregiver program, um, two, year, two years of experience you gain in Canada by using a work permit and then after that, you can apply for your permanent residency. Now you have two streams, which is caring for children under the age of 18 or caring for people with medical conditions. There are certain obligations that you have to meet in terms of language proficiency and in some cases, particular licensing that have to be uh, obtained. You need to have a minimum of one year of post-secondary level education and then you need to be admissible to Canada and then meet the other um, obligations towards your work permit authorization and then later on your permanent residency obligation. And remember the last part, which is the live-in component has been dropped out of the program. The nanny or the, or the caregiver uh, or, the, or the nurse, they do not have to live with the employer. They don't have to live with their family. It's an option if you choose to do so. You could if you want to live with a family, but that is no longer a requirement. You can live on your own as long as you can financially support yourself, then you're good to go when it comes to the living component.